Geek Citadel. Burden is a man with a loyalty to the mission he was given. He and his friend Jack were tasked with infiltrating the rebel group known as Xenolifer. As undercover operatives, they will take orders from a man named Liam. The two must fool Liam into trusting them and stop him from obtaining the Medusia virus. Of course, before the two can get what they are looking for, they are captured by an outside entity and the only man capable of saving them is Liam. The story is one of the main aspects I like about the title. The cyberpunk backdrop combined with the will of a man trying to complete his mission at all costs is engrossing. Disaster at every turn is what sets the building blocks for the story. Burden is aptly named because everything that happens will rest on his shoulders. His command choices could save people or get them killed in the process. Too bad that the storyline can't be seen without enduring the game mechanics. Once the game begins, we're presented with a hostage situation right off the bat. The player is told a few things that could help them understand the situation, but nothing will prepare them for the first round. Hostages are going to die and escape at will within the first minute, and the police will take down Burden and his companions with relative ease. It's in these first moments where you learn the truth about what gods will be watching us is all about. Trial and error. Managing the hostage situation is relatively easy. In fact, it's almost too easy in comparison to what awaits. Soon Burden and Jack will suffer torture from some flippant thugs in a sealed off room. Immediately, the player is supposed to keep these guys breathing and figure out what exactly to look for to keep them that way. It starts off simple enough with a few punches, but later they will have their teeth pulled out and one of them will even be restrained on a rack. After a certain amount of punishment in a day, Liam will descend from the ceiling and ask the men to survive for 20 days and provide them with health, painkillers, and information. The item selected will not be provided until the next day of torture is over, so unless you have information of what will be the next pain inflicting instrument, you're going to lose one or both of the men. You have to be prepared to lose constantly on something you wouldn't be able to solve on the first couple of tries, or even the first dozen. This is even more difficult to do if you actually want to try to keep Jack alive through the entire torture. You'd think that would be the worst part of the title, but it actually gets even worse in the very next chapter. The most tedious puzzle requires the player to combine letters in a specific order to find an antidote. At the same time, the remaining people must dig a way out of the cave. This sounds easy enough until you realize that the virus can get into the air and turn the workers into statues. So the robot and the engineer must keep the capacitors charged just in case something goes wrong. Players will have to test out the finished samples on a member of the crew, and all the while the timer is ticking down. This is a lot of information to try to learn, so on the very first try, you're going to automatically lose. Right after that, you'll spend 20 to 30 minutes trying to figure it out again, and again, and again. After the fifth time of repeating the boring chore, you will discover the random combination and cheer with glee, only to have your face fall in despair after being disillusioned by the fake success. The pain inflicted is immediate when you learn that there is a second, longer code to figure out. I've played a ton of trial and error titles that didn't have such a grievous repetition factor. Gods Will Be Watching is all about making dire choices in the dullest fashion possible. Each puzzle is about trying to survive some harsh event that Burden gets involved in. There are different circumstances that end up exactly the same as the last one. It's hard to call a puzzle a puzzle if the only way to figure it out is to be clairvoyant. The fear from losing a person from a bad decision is absent because those people will be in the very next chapter as if nothing happened. The inability to save at any point means you'll have to see repeating conversations, which makes the story a lot less interesting after a while. The boring gameplay is disappointing because the pixelated visuals are nostalgic bliss. The distinct color patterns, the crisp and expertly blurred out pixelated characters, and the excellent animation make for some splendid viewing. The soundtrack follows suit with some sci-fi synth tunes worthy of a 16-bit space epic. The story is also compelling even if it has a few typos hidden in the text. And these two things are the only real reason to suffer through the pain. I think the thing that irks me the most is how Gods Will Be Watching was advertised. It clearly identifies itself as a point and click thriller. I'm sitting here thinking it's going to be an adventure game full of choices instead of puzzles and instead we get a repetitive survival simulator with choices that don't matter. 
I wouldn't complain if I had any real fun in the game, but instead I felt like I suffered through the game to see the story. This is a title that I enjoy, but also despise at the same time. Gods Will Be Watching receives a wait for sale from Geek Citadel. The tedious puzzles at the start of the game are a bad sign of what is to come later. However, if anyone has enough endurance to bypass the monotony of the puzzles, there's an interesting tale of intrigue and fabulous visuals to experience. For more Geek Citadel reviews, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and check us out at GeekCitadel.com. We're also in the social network with Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.